Hey YouTubers! With the last couple hours of my weekend, I think I'm going to cover a couple of quick topics and then let you get on to the next video. <laughs> I just got back from uh, dropping off my car at the dealership to uh, have a little work done on it. My uh, power steering pump was making too much noise. Sure, I could replace it myself, but that's too much like work. <laughs> so it's only like 500 bucks, so petty cash. But um, basically, since I don't have my car now, I'm going to have to drive my bug out vehicle to work, which is not a problem. And it sort of emphasizes the old adage, um, two is one, one is none, because Basically, I no longer have my car, but I still have transportation. And if the truck broke, same deal with the car. Had to unload my bug out bag. I sort of took a few extra precautions to harden the trunk a little bit. And uh, so make, it would make it a little harder to steal. Um, and the car does not look like much. And it's a four-door. Windows aren't tinted. <laughs> so anybody, any self-respecting thief would would find something else to steal. <laughs> Plus, of course, they got the ignition trick that that there's a secret thing you have to do to get it started. So, well, they could always tow it away, but so far nobody's messed with it. Well, anyway, uh, oh, but I find that a lot of people who are ashamed of who they are have these tinted windows. <laughs> um, I personally have mine totally unblocked. Um, Okay, that's one topic. Two is one, one is none. I have a second topic I'd like to cover, and that is personal health. Um, just recently, uh, over the last month, I've peeled off 16 pounds. And as you can see, my pants are sort of baggy now. And it leaves more room for my sidearm, which is kind of cool. But uh, I've done it by um, following the advice of some lady who's a kind of obnoxious, really, really skinny, um, I think she's sort of an attention addict or something, but uh, she, um, she calls herself a bitch, which is a real bad sign anyway. <laughs> But uh, she is kind of abrasive and obnoxious, but she has some pretty good advice, I've discovered. And she goes by the uh, YouTube name of Free Leah, I think. But um, she goes into sort of a vegan diet with a lot of fruit in it, right? And I've followed, been following a lot of it, but not fully. Um, I've found that if I eat nothing but fruit, I have a tendency to get sick. So, uh, so I've actually, um, I have to almost like a vitamin pill, eat some, some kind of heavy protein thing, uh, and then, uh, you know, every few days or so. So I've got some hamburger in there. But anyway, uh, as far as calories go, um, I go heavy on bananas and a lot of fruit, apples and grapes and stuff like that. And it, um, it's, <laughs> it's given me pretty good results. I'm very happy with it. I feel so light. And I've taken, the other day I did something I haven't done for years. <laughs> I took the steps two at a time. And uh, at work, bending down and squatting down and dropping on my knees and fixing something and getting back up again, it's not as difficult as it was. That 16 pounds made a real difference. And... I plan to stay on this diet till I get down to like maybe 210 or something. And maybe I can lose this double chin thing I got going here. <laughs> but um, then, you know, because part of preparedness is to be physically fit as well. And I've got the physical activity, the fit heavy lifting and the strength building stuff. That's, they pay me to do that at work. Um, I could use a little more cardio, although I get some from this, uh, this, uh, this Xbox with the Kinect system there. So you turn toward the wall there. <laughs> Call me paranoid, if you will. But, um, so I get some cardio out of that, and then I control my diet, uh, by substituting, uh, fruits and vegetables for the usual Big Mac and French fries routine. <laughs> So, and that, that's helped a lot. Um, 
and I, I seem to, it's kind of hard to explain, but I do feel better. I feel more energetic and bouncy as I'm at work. Sometimes people kind of roll their eyes as I seem to be kind of uh, a little more eager and happy than is stylish to be. You're supposed to be kind of morose and serious and the hell with that. <laughs> okay. That is topic two that I'd like to cover. And I also have a third co topic that's kind of related to yesterday's topic, which was information communications, security, and com the ability to get past uh, censorship and whatnot on the internet. And, uh, but what I realized that I kind of left out was actual computer security. Um, for example, let me show you what I do for computer security. Um, notice I just turned my computer on and you notice that I get this uh, screen. It says TrueCrypt Bootloader 7.1 and then uh, it gives you a range of options and you have to enter a password for your uh, for your operating system to boot, basically. and. If the password isn't installed, um, your computer is a boat anchor. <laughs> basically, it's pretty much useless. And basically, whenever a thief uh, kicks in your door, and uh, the first thing they do, they look for the first thing they look for is information. And um, they and when they do that, they go straight to the computer desk, and they look for credit card bills and. Uh, important papers which I have in the safe deposit box um, like the birth certificates or social security cards things like that because they can take that information along with your address and stuff like that and they can sell it to uh, brokers who then turn around and resell it to illegal aliens or other people you know uh, uh, like basically anybody who wants to use a temporary uh, identity for something such as an illegal alien working and then they basically take the maximum number of deductions as if they had 50 kids <laughs> so they don't so they end up don't paying very much or they don't end up having much withheld for income tax and then the IRS gets starts giving you problems because they say that you've earned twice as much or more than you actually have, and then they say, where's my tax money? So um, you really, really need to keep control of your information. Um, if you can't control your information, it's basically available for anybody to use if they can kick in the door and take take it, right? now. Encryption allows you the option of even if somebody's taken your information, right, <clears throat> it's up to you whether they have the ability to unlock that information and uh, use it, right? For example, if uh, you were a prominent person like uh, Naomi Klein or maybe the guy from the Corbert Report <laughs> or Corbett Report, um, somebody a good deal more prominent and uh, and per, and famous than any of us, right? Somebody who uh, the authorities might have a grudge against and might want to like plant some crap on their machine so that they can charge them with all kinds of stuff and then haul them off to prison and get them out of the public arena, right? Now. If that happens, though, and you're like a prominent person, you can then withhold the passwords to the encrypted hard drives or whatever until your lawyer gets there. <laughs> and then your lawyer can get those uh, hard drives totally copied, like bit for bit. And then um, those archives will be able, will be a, um, a record, right? So that if the authorities uh, try to plant some crap on your hard drive, well, then you have the real copy and then it won't, won't stand up in court. So then of course, you, so you've got a couple of different people you want to protect your data from and that is like meth heads and um, 
uh, and of course, railroading, misbehaving government officials, right? Um, and of course, so with meth heads, the worst thing that can happen is you lose your, you lose your information or you lose your one copy of it. Um, and of course, even when you're sitting behind bars or something, if you still have those passwords, that means you are still in control of your information and they are not. <laughs> um, so I think that's an important thing to uh, keep in mind. Uh, for example, for me, um, I have my operating system encrypted, which I have already passed the, plugged the password in. Now I will boot it up. Um, and then, of course, on my cell phone here, I have uh, an SD card. And what I can do is I just pop it into this cradle right here. And then on that little SD card I have on on the FAT32 se uh, section of uh, of the uh, of the SD card I have uh, all of my finances and photocopies of my uh, or scanned copies of all my driver's license for several years and um, then I also have like uh, copies of my birth certificate uh, all my letters of recommendation and uh, basically just pretty much everything <clears throat> having to do with all my finances and whatnot. I, I even scan all of my receipts because it's so easy. I just throw it in the scanner, hit the button, and it pops out a PDF file, and then I throw it in my archives, right? But, uh, but basically with this, um, it allows me the ability to, in that phone, I have pretty much everything I need to uh, restart my life <clears throat> if, for example, my condo imploded for some reason or burned down or something while I was at work, if I had that phone with me, it would vastly decrease the pain and anguish that I would otherwise suffer. <clears throat> so, um, and that all of that information is on that SD card and it's all highly encrypted. If the phone is stolen, whoever it is can pop the... Uh, SD card out and try to get anything out of it. What they will get out of it is my emergency database of uh, manuals like how to purify water with uh, Clorox bleach, um, how to, uh, you know, a couple of different books um, in scanned or uh, PDF forms, and um, also uh, manuals to everything I own, <laughs> like. Uh, my scanner, my uh, pressure cooker, pretty much everything I've uh, taken the opportunity to. There's a little number on the back of all of these manuals or these, uh, even these little documents and you can Google search them under PDF files and usually they will pop up and then you can archive those files in your, uh, in your files. And all of the service manuals for pretty much everything I work on. Um, as far as a mechanic goes, but nothing that would be um, useful to them as far as for identity theft or things like that. So, okay, so that's basically two, uh, two things uh, that I just covered. Computer security and having a backup of all your information with you at all times. That's part of my EDC, that cell phone. Um, so, so what I have covered today Two is one, one is none. I've uh, covered, uh, I've covered um, having another car. <laughs> if you can afford it, it's pretty cool. Um, I've also covered um, my health and what I've been doing lately to increase my preparedness by increasing my physical health. I've also covered uh, encrypting your hard drive. Also, I've also covered uh, uh, backing up your information and having it with you at all times. Now that's four topics and I would kind of like to add a fifth as well. You'll notice that I'm home, right? And I've been home for about 90 minutes or so. And you'll also notice that I am armed. As you can see, I have got my everyday carry, pocket carry Ruger LCP 
380 in my pocket carry holster, right? And I'm, I'm of the mind that if you are home and you're still dressed, why disarm, you know? Why should you disarm and lock your pistol up in the safe or whatever or put it down? The safest, most useful place your pistol can be is on you. And if you're dressed, why disarm? I can't think of a, a reason. Now, I'll give you one reason. Before, I was heavier and I filled these pants a little bit more tightly. <laughs> I seem to have lost an un an uneven amount off my butt. <laughs> I guess guess it was bigger than I thought. <laughs> but anyway, um, why disarm if you're home and you're dressed? I see no point in it because you might need that. God hope, hope, hope that you don't, but uh, it's possible. So, five topics. So, I guess that's about all for today. <laughs> um, you guys have a good, good one, and uh, Merry Christmas.